Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to my channel. I know, I know it's been like a whole month since we've seen each other, since we've done any type of video together. And I hope that you're doing very, very well. I've been on a social media break for personal reasons, but now I am back and I'm ready to do another video. So the inspiration for today's video actually comes from a conversation that I just finished having like 30 minutes ago. I was talking to someone on Instagram somebody who is starting to get more into Lolita and they actually want to become a lifestyler. And as I've mentioned before, I've been a lifestyler for a couple of years now. So in between that conversation and trying to actually get something organized and together for a video, I have created 10 tips for those who would like to become lifestyle Lolitas. So we're not at my house right now, so I don't have my normal tea time set up. I hope you'll forgive me. But today's tea, we are drinking a honey ginger green tea. It is very, very delicious. I just tried it today. This is my second cup. I made you a cup as well, so I hope that you like it too. Here you go. Alrighty, so I have written down the 10 tips inside of my cheeseburger notebook. So let's look at the first one. Our tip number one is to decide in what capacity you want to wear Lolita. And what that means is that Lolita, what Lolita is to me may not be what Lolita is to you. What being a lifestyler to me cannot equal out to being a lifestyler for you. So for me personally, Lolita can fit into every aspect of my life, meaning I can wear it when I go out, I can wear it when I go to work, I can wear it when I go to the grocery store because that's what works for me. But if your job is very conservative or if your job wears a uniform, then maybe you have to wear Lolita as a lifestyler outside of work. It's all about finding your level of comfortability and finding out how you can incorporate Lolita more and more into your lifestyle. So that one is a very, very simple tip. Just think about your life, think about your schedule, think about the things that you like to do, how often you can wear Lolita and just start to shush it in a little bit here and there. Let's go to tip number two. Tip number two is very, very important. Invest in comfortable dresses, skirts, and shoes. When you wear Lolita as often as I do or when you're in Lolita, period, being comfortable is key. So invest in dresses and skirts that are not digging into your skin, that are not uncomfortable to wear, and things that you will feel comfortable wearing more than like the hour and a half you would be at a meetup. So for me, I get dresses that have lots and lots of shearing, lots and lots of stretch and dresses that are not cutting into my arms and everything like that when I move. And I try to think about dresses that I can wear for eight hours or more. I work 10 hour shifts at work, so I need a dress that will take me throughout the whole day without me just falling over and be able to pass out because the dress is too tight and you know things like that. So think about things that are going to be comfortable. And investing in skirts is something that I need to do too because I have only dresses. Dresses are just what works better for me. But invest in skirts because they are very versatile and you can wear them as a toned down Lolita style for places where like straight full Lolita might not be so appropriate. And comfortable shoes are a must as well. I do lots and lots of walking. I'm on my feet all day long. So comfortable shoes for me, that's flat tea parties or like flat shoes that I have modified to make them more Lolita friendly, but comfortability is so important. Please only get clothes that are comfortable. You will thank me later. Let's move on to the next one. So along with buying things that are comfortable, it is very important also to buy a variety of blouses and different cuts and colors, as well as different dresses and different substyles and prints to fit your every mood and every occasion. So if your whatever your Lolita style is, it would be best to buy like a variety of prints in that style or prints in different styles so that when you're feeling gothic one day, you have something gothic to wear. When you're feeling sweet one day, you have something sweet to wear. If you're going to a meetup and the theme is the circus, you'll have something to wear. If your favorite prints are just kitty cats and butterflies, that's perfectly a-okay. Get yourself some kitty cats and butterflies Get them in different styles, get them in different cuts. You don't want to be wearing the same exact thing every single day, at least not me personally. If that's what you want to do, that's cute, that's fine. But it would be nice to invest in lots of different dresses. If you're going to be wearing this like every single day, your style is going to change, your mood is going to change. 
your occasions are going to change and your dresses are going to have to change as well. Also, what I found with myself personally, as I have grown, as I have matured, I have moved away from Sweet Lolita. When I first started to buy dresses, I bought only Sweet Lolita. I bought like bears and balloons and candy and sprinkles and all that stuff. Now I don't want that on my body at all. So I am happy that I have bought different dresses in different styles because now when I do have those rare occasions where I want to dress up sweet for a sweet meetup, I have them, but I have things that fit my current style and my current mood and what I want to project. And also because of my work, I like to incorporate my dresses into what I'm doing as a theme when I'm at work with my students. So for example, if we are doing under the sea for a week, I can wear all of my mermaid prints and all of my dream marine and things like that. If we're doing, I don't know, the circus, like I mentioned before, I can wear some circus types of prints. So try to get prints that are versatile. Get blouses that are versatile because not every single Peter Pan blouse will go with every single dress. Get them in different cuts, get them in different colors get them in different styles, get some sheer ones for the summer, get some non-sheer ones for when you wanna wear them with a skirt. Invest in lots and lots of items so that you have a lot to choose from. Alrighty, let's move on to number four. It's all good, right? All right, tip number four, learn how to hand sew, mend, and alter your dresses. So, the altering part might be a little bit trickier. I personally do not trust myself to alter any brand dresses right now. I am learning more and more how to sew and how to make dresses. So as I progress there, then I'll be able to fix up things on my own. But learning how to sew and how to mend is very, very important to keep your wardrobe nicer for longer and to keep everything wearable. So as you are wearing your dresses more as a lifestyler, you might experience some seams coming loose, buttons on your waist ties popping off, buttons on like the front of your dress popping off and all kinds of things will be happening. So learning how to sew and mend will help to save your wardrobe. I cannot like tell you how many times I have been on the Metro or doing any random thing. And then I just have like a mini wardrobe disaster where I accidentally tear a waist tie off or I rip the bottom of my dress on something or, you know, just things happen when you're just out in the streets. So just learn how to mend and alter and fix up your own dresses so that you will save money and not have to take anything to the tailor and you can keep all the dresses cycling inside of your wardrobe. It is very, very important. It is a great life skill to have even if you're not into Lolita. And that is, that's it for that one. So let's go to number five. All righty, so number five. Use a variety of avenues to buy your items. So this is something that I had to learn when I was starting to get more into Lolita. You do not have to only wear Angelic Pretty and Baby the Starshine Bright. I know that's pretty much common knowledge by now, but there are so many other brands. There are so many websites that you can buy from. I've mentioned a lot of websites before where I shop. I like to shop on LaceMarketLolitaWardrobe.com, websites like that. But you can also buy indie items directly from Taobao. Callista has made a very, very wonderful video on how to shop from Taobao. And I will put the link in the description below. The video helped me out a lot because I had difficulty with Taobao before, but now I have the confidence and I feel that I can go on there and get a whole bunch of stuff because I always need more dresses. So use a lot of websites to get stuff from you can buy your accessories as well and your shoes and your bags from a lot of different areas when i have done wardrobe videos in the past where i have done um, my lookbook in the past you saw i got a lot of stuff from amazon and ebay those are my go-to places a lot of the times if i'm not making my own accessories i would get them from there i've also gotten a lot of things from my local beauty supply store the rings that i'm wearing right now were like $2 and I got them like three years ago at a beauty supply store. Whereas getting them online, they would have been a lot more expensive. So use all the resources around you to find things to wear for Lolita. A lot of my blouses as well, I have got from like thrift stores and things like that. They were very inexpensive. I've gotten veils from thrift stores that came off of wedding dresses. There is so much out there that you can use. Definitely check out 
indie brands, check out your local community. If anybody there is a seamstress and is making Lolita items, my community, I am blessed because we have some talented people here and I love everybody's everything that they do. So I have a lot of resources to buy Lolita items from. Definitely look into your communities, support your small businesses, use as much as you can to buy your Lolita items, but just make sure Please make sure that you check out that quality first. Read reviews, look up pictures of people wearing the items. Do not just go on a random website and trust that it's gonna be perfect. Do not shop on anything where you're gonna get like a really fancy looking Lolita dress, Henrietta dress, and it says like $13.99. Do not do that to yourself. So just remember to be smart when you're shopping, just like you would with any other clothing item or anything else that you buy online. Don't just throw your money at anybody. Definitely make sure that it is like a good, respectable, reputable company. And if you see dresses that you like haven't seen before on the internet or on Facebook or whatever, 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 I message that person to ask them where they got the dress from because then you might discover some shops or some brands that you've never heard of before. I know that still happens to me five years later all the time. So yeah, use a variety of avenues to get your stuff from. You don't have to shop just from one store. All right, let's move on to the next one. So number six is to buy more than one petticoat and to get a cage skirt. So buying more than one petticoat is very important because your dresses will require different levels of poof depending on what you're wearing. You also might experience some petticoat deflation. You're just, you're just going to need more than one pet. Just, you're you're going to need more than one. Just trust me. So getting a cage skirt. Cage skirts are my life currently. I no longer wear floofy, poofy petticoats. So I've mentioned in my last video. I love cage skirts. They are very well structured. I love that they, a lot of them are adjustable and I love that they keep my legs cool, especially in the summertime. Being a lifestyle Lolita in the summer is a struggle, but those cage skirts just keep air flowing and they just make me feel like I'm not so weighed down and I don't have to ever worry about them deflating. So definitely invest in a cage skirt. If you don't want one, just get multiple petticoats so that you will always have one available and ready. So that was a quick tip. Let's move on to the next one. Alrighty, number seven, focus on quality over quantity. So when you are a lifestyler, you are going to need more dresses in your wardrobe unless you want to be continuously circling out the same five dresses every single week, which low key I sometimes do. You are going to want to get a lot of dresses that are made well, are of good material, and dresses that will last you a long time. You do not want to get a bunch of cheap dresses just for the sake of having dresses because then you'll end up losing money, having to alter them, to mend them, to fix them up continuously. And that'll be so stressful and those dresses will look just jank after a certain amount of time. So just focus on dresses that are good, that are structured really well, and that will get you through a couple of years. Also, that means that you need to be maintaining your wardrobe. I've talked about it before. Spot clean your dresses in between having them washed or having them dry cleaned. Make sure when you take your dresses off that you take them off in a way that will not get your makeup on them. Um, pay attention to the way that you store your dresses. I store mine on racks like you will find in a store if you do not have that available. Just store your dresses somewhere where they will stay clean and dry and aired out because you do not want your dresses to get musky and weird. You do not want all the black dye from one dress to rub off onto the dye of another dress. Like you just don't want to just be throwing your dresses around. These are an investment. They are to me at least, and I take very good care of them and that's how they've lasted as long as they have. So please make sure that you keep your dresses somewhere nice, somewhere where they will be safe, somewhere that is away from your animals if you have any and to focus on dresses that are of good quality. Quality is so important to Lolita. It is so much a part of the aesthetic that you look nice and put together. So please, please take care of your dresses and only buy good dresses. I love you so much. I want you to look good. You want you to look good. Please only buy things that are good. All right, let's do the next one. So I don't know if this next one's gonna be like weird or if it's just gonna be obvious, but Maintain your wardrobe of non-Lolita items. 
So even if you are a lifestyler, chances are you're not going to be able to wear Lolita to every single event, every single day, 24 seven. There are going to be times where Lolita is either too uncomfortable and it's um, too inappropriate or you just don't want to wear it. So for me, I love to bike to work every single day. I bike to work in the mornings and in the afternoons, and I don't want to wear Lolita on a 45 minute bike ride because my dresses will be uncomfortable. Well, they'll get sweaty and I'll just, it'll just be not a good situation. So I have athletic clothes to wear for biking and hiking, and I have Lolita clothes to wear for everything else. So you'll also um, need clothes for, for example, if you like have a funeral or something like that, and Lolita will be inappropriate to go to. If there's a family event with the people are very conservative, or if there's going to be a lot of kids running around and you don't want your dresses to get messed up, if the weather is bad and you don't want to wear Lolita on one particular day, or if you're just going to Wawa at four o'clock in the morning, you don't want to get fully dressed up, you're going to need to have clothes for every occasion, Lolita and outside of Lolita. So make sure that you have clothes for every season, just like you would with Lolita. Make sure you have coats, sweaters, jackets. If you wear jeans, I do not wear pants outside of Lolita. I only wear dresses 24 seven. That's just my life. So just make sure that you have backups for everything. And that's it for that one. Let's move on to the next one. So tip number nine is do not compare yourself to other lifestylers. As I've mentioned before, what being a lifestyler to me, what being a Lolita to me may not be the same for you. So this whole fashion is about expressing yourself, expressing your own creativity, finding dresses that you like that make you feel beautiful. Being a lifestyler is the exact same way. So for me, being a lifestyler means incorporating Lolita into as much of my life as possible. And that means the entire aesthetic. So in my apartments, I have, you know, a tea setup. Like if you've seen before on my Instagram and through these videos, I have portraiture hanging up around of Georgian and Victorian people. I have the whole shebang. I have my dresses displayed. My whole place is like just a big Lolita museum because that's what I want to do with my life. But if your life is something different, then that's perfectly a-okay too. You can still be a lifestyler. You're going to be living your life as a lifestyler, just like I live my life and like Susie Q and Sally Mae and all those people live their lives. So always stay true to yourself. Do not let Lolita change you. Do not let the way that other people live their lives make you feel bad about your life because this is all about what you want to do. Remember that. So our very last tip is to not wear Lolita when you don't want to and don't feel bad about it either. So for me, I am a lifestyler. I am right now sitting in my mom's living room and I'm wearing full Lolita for like no reason. And that's just how I want to live my life. But if you are at home and you want to wear some shorts and a t-shirt all day, that's perfectly a-okay too. So find where Lolita fits into your life, how you want to wear it, how often you want to wear it, and how much you really want to live that aesthetic. What Lolita is to me and what a lifestyler is to me will not be the same for you. It will not be the same for everybody. So what I want everybody to remember is that Lolita fashion should never be just something horrible to you. It shouldn't feel like a chore. It shouldn't make you frustrated. Just find out where you fit in this fashion. Find your niche. Find out how often you can wear it, how long you can wear it for like hourly and still be able to stand yourself. Just find out where Lolita works for you and just roll with it. Live your best frilly life and I cannot wait to see your pictures on Instagram. Thank you all so much for joining me for this tea time video. Please let me know what you would like to see next tea time. I will try to do a video very, very soon. But for now, do not forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, follow me on social media, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.